Hi everyone, I'm Rincey and I'm one of the contributing editors of our Book Riot. Today I'm going to be talking about nonfiction books. I find myself really craving nonfiction lately and as you guys are well aware, I read a wide variety of books um, and that extends to nonfiction as well. There's a wide variety of nonfiction that's out there and I seem to be sampling all of it <laughs> right now. So in this video, I'm going to talk about two books that I have read recently one that I'm currently in the middle of and then one that I plan on getting to relatively soon. I think I have something here that could potentially appeal to everyone even if you're not typically a nonfiction reader. Um, there are some really really great nonfiction. I think a lot of people tend to think of nonfiction as being really dry and I have some stuff here that is on the drier side but I also have some stuff here that's really just like strong compelling narratives that I think would appeal to not nonfiction readers. But I mean they will but also people who don't typically read nonfiction. Uh, so yeah let's jump right into the books. So the first one that I want to talk about is probably my favorite out of the pile at least so far um, and that is We Gonna Be Alright Notes on Race and Resegregation by Jeff Chang. This is a collection of essays and as you can tell it's like a relatively small short little book so this is a great one to pick up if you typically don't read a lot of nonfiction or you're intimidated by nonfiction because this is small um, the essays are quick and super engaging like the subtitle says it's a collection of essays about race and resegregation jeff chang here is exploring just where we are as a country right now uh, talking about how we've gotten to this point how segregation is often thought of as this thing that happened a long time ago you know 40 50 years ago and we've moved beyond that but it seems like as a society we are moving back to segregating ourselves not necessarily always because of like specific laws but just our own like human nature seems to be segregating ourselves from other people of other cultures and classes and whatnot and how that has led to racial segregation and how that has then led to the current day um inequalities and violence that we're seeing um there's some really great discussions in here about representation in the media and he connects that to segregation that's happening across the country in various cities. It's really really fantastic, really empowering mm -hmm. and uh, inspiring. So yeah, I gave this book a five star rating. I loved it so 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 much. It's probably the best book I've read all year in terms of like what has affected me the most. I highly highly recommend it. Great great essay collection. The next one is American Fire, Love, Arson, and Life in a Vanishing Land by Monica Hess. This is kind of like a true crime book uh, but it's probably one of the better true crime books I've read. This follows this small town in Virginia where they just had like 60 arsons happen in this small town um, and they could not figure out who was doing it. Now this book doesn't keep it a secret in terms of like who's doing all the arsons. What they actually do is they uh, look at it from the point of view of like both the investigators as well as from the people who are setting these buildings on fire. And she also does a really great job of sort of just looking at this small town in America and what would lead to this point and how they were able to pull all of this off and why it happened in this small town. And yeah, it's just a really great exploration of both this compelling story about arsons, but also a really compelling story about what's happening in the United States right now in terms of the economy and how that's affecting people in these smaller towns and how that leads to a crime like this actually happening. It's so, so good. This is another one that's really, really great if you are someone who is nonfiction adverse because it's written kind of like a novel, like it's really gripping. And Monica has does a really great job of really painting a picture of all of these different characters in this small town. In this book, there is actually a collection of like photographs of the people who are featured in this book. Um, but I was reading this as an ebook and the photos are at like the end of the book and it's great because Monica has does a great job of like not just like physically describing but describing the characteristics of these people that when I got to the photo section at the end of the book I was like yeah these people are basically what I imagined in my head. So yeah that just tells you what a great writer uh, Monica Hess is and how great of a book this is. So yeah I highly recommend picking this one up. All right and the one that I am currently in the middle of is The Color of Law, A Forgotten History of How Our Government Segregated America by Richard Rothstein. This is a book that was recently long listed for the National Book Award for Nonfiction um, but I'd had this one on my list for a while. I kept like picking it up and putting it down at bookstores and I finally just got it from the library. This is one that is slightly on the drier side but I am completely compelled by this story. Um, don't let the size intimidate you. The last like 100 pages are all just like notes and glossary and 
reference point. So this book is only like 200 and something pages long really in terms of story. But what this book is doing, it's basically going through different parts of the United States, looking at how different towns have created these ordinances and laws and how they were basically trying to keep African Americans out of various neighborhoods, um, how places like the FHA, which is the Federal Housing Association here in the United States, uh, wouldn't give loans to African Americans, or if various mortgage companies would give loans to them, they would jack up interest rates, um, or, you know, if they ever missed a payment or were late on a payment, they would immediately evict evict people. Builders, if it was known that they were created like integrated housing, <laughs> they wouldn't get the funding to make good housing. Uh, so places where they knew black people were going to live, they would get less money. And so then the sh construction would be like more shoddy and those residences. Yeah, it it's crazy because the stuff that he's covering in here, I mean, obviously I'm not completely done with it yet. Um, it takes place in like the early 1900s, like, you know, we all know the United States, not a great place for black people in the early 1900s, and even through like the 50s and 60s. But there's stuff that's happened within, you know, the past 20 years, that's not great either. Uh, so yeah, he's just looking at the various laws and ordinances that happen in cities and country. Uh, counties across the country. And yeah, I'm finding it really fascinating. I'm very much interested in housing law, or like housing segregation. Um, and just all of that sort of things right now. So this is completely appealing to me. I would say I would recommend this one to people who regularly read nonfiction because it is on the drier side. It's talking a lot about like various laws and Supreme Court cases and stuff like that. Uh, but I find the topic to be completely, completely fascinating. And it's like very accessible. So if you're someone who doesn't know a lot about law, you're not going to get lost or anything like that. This is a very, very accessible book. So yeah, that's great. And the final book that I am planning on picking up relatively soon is The Brain defense, murder in Manhattan, and the dawn of neuroscience in America's courtrooms like Kevin Davis. This is a book that was recommended on the Book Riot Insider Slack uh, in the Read Harder Challenge channel. Uh, someone was talking about needing something for tech and Rachel Manuel, who actually creates the Read Harder Challenge, uh, says she was reading this one for the tech challenge. And I was immediately interested because I really enjoy books about neuroscience and then also crime stuff. So this is sort of like the perfect combination of the two. The story follows this man who in 1991 uh, called the police and was like, I murdered my wife by throwing her like out of their apartment window. So obviously he was arrested and like the police were very confused because they were like, this man has no prior history of like domestic violence or anything on his record and no one could really understand like what compelled this man to do that. The man was also like 65 years old. And then doctors did like an MRI on his brain and it turned out there was like a giant tumor on his frontal lobe, which is known for impacting your judgment. Again, this is all happening in 1991. And so apparently this was like the start of using neuroscience in court cases. And so I believe that this book uh, looks at that case as well as looks at the advances of technology that had happened, you know, through that point and I possibly beyond that point um, and how that's being used in court and how we are viewing, you know, personal judgment and blame and actions and whatnot when it comes to these types of cases when people have various neurological issues. Um, so yeah, it seems very, very interesting. Um, I can't recommend it because I haven't read it yet, but I'm very intrigued by it. So yeah, those are four nonfiction books that I have either recently read, currently reading, or will be reading soon. Leave a comment down below if you've read any of these or if there are any other nonfiction books that you've been reading recently that you're really into. So yeah, that's all I have for this week and I will see you guys next week. Bye.